Hi, welcome to my channel. I trust you've had a productive week. For those who don't know, Pastor Ayodeja is one of those old school prophets, for want of a better description. His prophetic gift began from childhood. He has worked in the prophet's office for a long time and is now raising men and women to steward their prophetic giftings and offices accurately. Please watch. For an anti-Christian policy of the government of the day. John was talking to that island, cut off, ostracized. But he knew he was there for the Lord. See, man I've been seeing a wave of persecution that will bat prophetic ministry. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm a prophet of boom. But there's coming a wave of persecution, whether you like it or not. It's going to, the affliction will be the womb that will reveal some prophetic voices. Even in our nation. You see, one of the instruments of the Lord is tribulation. For then people seek the Lord. There are times that hardship condition you to seeking the Lord. And tribulation. And persecution. And he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, he said. And he began to interface some realities in the spirit, bringing words for the churches. And in chapter number 19, one of the functionaries that engaged him in the details of divine revelation was an angel. And the angel came to him in verse 9. So in verse 9, John said, And he said unto me, Write, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are true of God. Please remember this. There's something to pick from these. Prophetic people, you must have documents. These days, it is easy. You can have your recorder on your phone close to you if you can't write. But the easiest to do is to write. Many times, it was meant to write. I see you these days, you are so, you are so powerful in your mind. You don't write anything. So, you see, you can't grow in the voice of the Lord if you don't have document. One of the things that powers your faith is reference. You have to go back to that detail. And if you can't find it, how will you go back to it? There are things I wrote down. There are things God will bring to you that will not make meaning until the, its time comes. And the details of everything will begin to play out. Right. I beg you, right. Especially for you in this age that you are learned. One of the gifts of civilization that I believe God gave us in the kingdom is what? Education. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> an angel who is not even part of the civilization was who advised John. Right. Right. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true saints of God. Document the saints. One of the ways that God knows you put premium on his saints and speakings is when you put them down. Right, right, anyhow. Right. If you get to my room, you'll find a piece of bread, a paper on bread. I've written on it. If you get to my car, 
You just see me writing something. It, you won't know the meaning. It is me that knows the meaning. Because I needed to quickly put it down. Right! So I can collect those things and come and go and put it in a place or write it and make it better in a, in a document. And I started early. If you want to improve your revelatory access, preserve the saints of God. If you don't preserve it, God does not see you as placing premium on it. If God sees that you take it seriously, it will come to you again. When you quench the spirit, the supply will cease. The way to hear God more is to give it attention. If you don't give attention to the speakings of God, psh, it cut off. God does not speak aimlessly. It's not a talkative. So, so Isaiah says, incline and hear and hear. There is a posture for hearing. You must show seriousness to hearing. And when you hear, you must preserve him. Preserve the truth. Open the gate unto this righteous nation. The nation that keeps the truth. It was also the saying of Isaiah. So, what am I emphasizing here? Document. If John didn't write... Will meet, miss how many books? Do you know when they were living in their days, they didn't know there was going to be a Bible? Do you know where God is going next? Will you be part of it? Most of the documents you find there were daily livings of people. How are you living? The way you are living now, can it be captured for another generation? One person was writing a letter to his son and even captured it and preserved it. What are you writing or living? The trip Paul made, the Barnabas made, in different places. Do you know how many things heaven is interested in capturing? Do you know God is about to preserve something about your life for times to come. They were not doing it because they knew they were going to have a chapter, a book, in the next document that God is going to pre present into a generation. They were living in accordance, in alignment to the purposes of God. Are we still together? But this is where I'm going. These are the true saints of God. And so you need to write. Maya Robasu Kapalia. There is coming a wave of persecution. There is coming. Out of the womb of it will arise voices. See, Pastor Ayajaja is right. I have quite some stories about this, both positive and negative, but I'll tell just one because that one still bothers me today. When I fellowshiped with Auntie and Lagos physically, I started receiving songs from heaven. Most times, I'd quickly record them on my phone so I wouldn't forget since I can't write music. This particular Monday morning, I woke up from sleep with a song and I remembered all the lyrics which hadn't happened before. Unfortunately, we hadn't had light all day and night, as in Sunday into Monday, so all my devices were dead. I couldn't record the song. But thankfully, it was so catchy, it was memorable. If you know Lagos, it takes about an hour to two hours or three to get anywhere, depending on the distance between your home and your destination. And traffic. Mine was typically one to two hours if there wasn't any traffic at Yaba or Suvalere. So I set up for work fully confident that I'd still remember the song when I get to the office. I sang the song all the way from home to my office. I even sang the song at my desk if I remember correctly. But when my phone had charged, 
I forgot to record the song. 6 p.m. came and I was at Bible study in Reverend Austin's home. That day, the topic was the exact song I'd been singing all morning, which I couldn't now remember. Then after the message, Reverend Austin asked if anybody had a contribution to make. No one said anything. Then he asked, pretty strangely, if anybody had a song. Oh my God, the way my heart was beating out of my chest there, I felt so bad and I had no idea what to do. I couldn't even be brave enough to stand up to say, oh God, God give me a song for this meeting. No, I was just full of regret. I was like, oh, maybe if I had told the colleagues to record it and send it via WhatsApp, or perhaps if I told my sister to record it and send it via WhatsApp, or if I'd even written the, li the lyrics down, maybe I'd have remembered the song. So yeah, don't be like me. When God gives you a word, write it down immediately. Who knows? That song would have been the perfect note on which to end Bible study that day. Who knows who the song was even for? Who knows the song could have been one of the popular songs today? So yeah, write the vision. Thanks for watching.